We are starting this broadcast from West Asia. Iran is preparing on an attack on Israel that will use more powerful warheads and other weapons not used in its previous two attacks. This is according to Iranian and Arab official briefed on the plans. And they told the Wall Street Journal that Iran could use Iraqi territory for part of the operation and would likely target Israeli military facilities, but much more aggressively than last time. Earlier today, speaking of Israel's October 26th attack that killed four Iranian army personnel, the president, Masoud Peseshkia, warned that it will in no way leave any violation of its territory and security unanswered. However, he said that a potential ceasefire between its allies, Hamas and Hezbollah, and on the other side, Israel, could affect the intensity of Iran's response to Israel. Meanwhile, in the last 24 hours, Israel pressed on its campaigns in Lebanon and Gaza. Gaza rescuers said that Israeli strikes in the Strip killed at least 35 people, including 17 people in the north. At least three people were also killed in an airstrike near the southern Lebanon city of Sidon. The Lebanese Health Ministry has confirmed this, saying that more bombs hit the country. The Israeli Defense Forces said it has eliminated a senior commander in Hezbollah's drone unit, Ali Barakat. And the IDF said that Barakat spent over a decade planning and carrying out UAV attacks across Israel. Meanwhile, Israel said Hezbollah fired about 100 missiles from Lebanon into its territory, several of which were intercepted, while some fell in unpopulated areas. However, the Lebanese group said that the projectiles targeted for the first time Israeli military bases in the northern city of Haifa. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on a visit to the Lebanese border vowed to respond firmly to Hezbollah's recent attacks. With or without an agreement, the key to returning peace and security in the north, the key to returning our evacuated residents in the north safely to their homes, is to push Hezbollah back to the litany to strike any attempt by it to rearm and thirdly to respond forcefully against any action against us. All right, now let's get some perspective from Tel Aviv. We are being joined by Daniel Rubenstein, the current Israeli citizen spokesperson and former advisor to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Rubenstein, good to see you again. Thank you for having me again. Now, Iran's president has said that potential ceasefire between Hamas, Hezbollah and Israel could affect the quote-unquote intensity of Iran's response. Now, last time I spoke to you, you were optimistic about a plan. So how is Israel working on a ceasefire? Well, right now it's quite terrifying that the government of Iran is threatening the people of Israel with a massive ballistic missile attack. We saw Iran attack Israel with ballistic missiles in April. They fired nearly 200 ballistic missiles again at Israel in October, and they're threatening to do it again a third time. I'm not sure what the government of Iran expects to accomplish or what the people of Israel are supposed to do in response. We're in a war right now. It's on one side, the people of Israel who would like to live in peace, and on the other side, the regime in Iran that is saying that Israel must be destroyed, and it's acting on its beliefs, it's acting on its policy that Israel must be destroyed by sponsoring the terrorist groups around Israel's borders that want to destroy Israel, and the regime itself is attacking Israel and threatening Israel. So we are hoping that Iran backs down from this threat, but if it doesn't, I'm sure that the Israeli government will respond in kind. So are you saying there is no progress on the ceasefire front? I have not seen any progress on this front because the the middle ground between Hamas and Hezbollah on the one hand and Israel on the other is non-existent. The Hamas position is that it must be allowed to stay in power in Gaza and be in a position to plan more massacres like it did on October 7th. And Israel is saying this is completely unacceptable. And at the same time, Hamas continues to hold hostages in its underground terror dungeons. And at the same time, Hezbollah it's very clear what we are demanding of Hezbollah. We simply want our people who have been forced out of their homes by Hezbollah attacking their homes. We want them to be able to go home safely. They can't go home safely because Hezbollah is threatening to shoot them with rockets and anti-tank missiles and suicide drones. There's not a middle ground in this position. Hezbollah needs to back off or Israel will continue to push it away. All right, let's talk about Gaza then. It has been exactly a week since Israel banned the United Nations agency that provides relief to the Palestinian refugees who have been displaced for more than a year now. Has Israel found an alternative? 
Israel is, of course, open to alternatives. It's that the alternatives themselves need to step up. There are many international aid organizations, such as the UN High Commission on Refugees, such as USAID, and many others that are capable of a logistic operation to drive aid a very short distance from inside Israel to inside Gaza. What's happening right now is they are standing up and letting UNRWA um, monopolize the distribution of aid at the same time that UNRWA is completely compromised by Hamas. There are many members of Hamas who infiltrated UNRWA. They're part of UNRWA. They invaded Israel on October the 7th. There are Hamas employees, Hamas members who are also UNRWA employees. The organization is completely corrupt and compromised, and it needs to be replaced as fast as possible. But Mr. Rubenstein, what I'm asking is, don't you think Israel should have, could have, or rather should have, uh, made sure that there was an alternative before banning the UN agency? The legislation that bans uh, Israeli cooperation with UNRWA was set to take effect in 90 days, and it was just passed a few days ago. So we have about a three-month period to find an alternative. I am sure that an alternative can be found that allows the rapid entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza and its distribution. Right now, UNRWA has effectively failed to distribute the aid that goes into Gaza. A lot of the aid that Israel makes sure goes into Gaza, it sits on the other side of the border crossing because UNRWA is not in a position to go and pick it up and drive it to where it needs to be. So I'm hoping that other aid organizations that deal with this crisis aid distribution all over the world can step up and Israel can work with them rather than the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which has been completely compromised by Hamas. All right, let's zoom out a little, Mr. Rubenstein. It's about, in about a day's time, Americans will vote for the next president. Are you worried about who comes next to the White House? I think Israel needs to be prepared for whoever comes into power in the United States. This is an issue for the Americans themselves to decide. Israel has a very close and important relationship with the United States. It is its key partner, its key ally, and we're going to work together with whoever wins the election. This is an issue for the American people to decide, and it's for Israel and the United States to work together on, on common challenges. All right, Mr. Rubenstein, thank you so much for joining us here and getting us your Thank you for having me again. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.